Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Transport and Infrastructure Committee meeting. I'll just um, ask Councillor Kappa, Karakia, please. Apologies, so I've received apologies from the Mayor, Mokko Kapania, Chair of the Kaika Ehakeanga Community Board, Chief Director, and Councillor Pleskevich Penitari is. He may come online, but he's not here at the moment. Are there any others? Come on, move the next. Second, I'll second it. All in favour? Okay, deputations. We have two deputations this morning. Um, Doug Jane regarding Wanui Road and Ange Waitani and Judy Beats relating to the Road Safety Education Program. So, um, let's see our timeline five minutes. Doug, would you like to come and tell us? Talk to us, please. Okay, I'm not sure how aware you are of the state of Wanui Road. I came in last week and bought some pictures in, and I believe you may have got copies of those. Yeah, we've got those. Yeah, that only represents part of the problems on the road. Road has had no serious work done on it for more than two years. I would remind you that there is an implied contract between the ratepayers and the council. And that contract is that you provide services and we provide rates. Why do we road you get approximately a million dollars of rates a year? And we are getting nothing for that rate work. Now, are you aware of the actual state of the road? Any of you? Do you travel on that road? Yes, I do. I don't travel on it regularly, but I've been on it. I'm aware of it, yes. You are aware of it. And it's really pretty cool, isn't it? Work. Now, there's been claims made by the council that it's all due to typhoons and cyclones and all of that. A lot of this work is just regular road work that should have been done over the two years. Some of it is caused by heavy trucks. And the state of those particular pieces uh, should have been attended to long ago. And of course, we have this problem that you have to go cap in hand to NZTA to get the money, and then NZTA take your sweet time, and then eventually you get the money and eventually you do the job, and it's really not acceptable. So that's my submission. I'd be interested to see what you've got to say to me. Any questions for Mr. Jane? Have you, have you finished your submission? Yes, I have. Questions from anyone? I've got one. Mr. Jane, um, in August of 2020, we um, tended for a port, like one part of the work that needed to be done along there. Do you recall that work? I think there's a white area along that stretch. That one got done. Uh, well, they put it the council fairly quickly on the two major slips. The council put up road silage and bypass stuff necessary to get traffic moving. Oh, I think that's after 2020. Yeah. The storm happened in 2022. Yeah, which, which white one? Um, be, before 2022, I can't remember exactly where on Wainui Road it, it is, but there was a portion which was, you know, not, not as bad as this, but we got lots of RFSs about it and people had to drive on the wrong side of the road. That was a significant stretch, and that has been completed. Can you just confirm? I can't recall that one. I don't recall that. Either. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> um, Chair, can we perhaps ask one of the roading staff to get back to Mr. Jane on when, like, where these are in the tender award process and when the works are starting? Because I don't think there's staff here to respond to you today, Mr. Jane. Can I comment on that? I put in a request for service 
and ask people to bring me and nobody ever brings me back. I really don't know why you bother to have an 0800 number because you don't get anything from it. It's completely useless. And again, you know, we are paying you people rates for services. Now, if you haven't got enough rate money, that's another argument that we need to have. And in actual fact, I, I do agree, council is severely underfunded. There's no doubt about that. But you as council need to take that up with the government. We have. Yeah. I think the, um, there's a couple of things, and I'll get Rob to talk to us if he's... If he's but the, um, there's been a number of weather events, and across the district we've got a heap of this type of slips. Yeah. So the funding from the government, we have got it... Um, We've got a substantial amount of money, but these are these particular failures are what referred to as priority two and three. Priority ones we worked on first, which included the likes of the Mungamok region. And a lot of our um, contractors and just our availability of beer and so on has been stretched. But this is pretty sure this is a program. Rob might like to update us. Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, there's two aspects to it. One is the the slip repair. Um, Program and I'll get the capital works manager Dye to give us an update specifically on those minor slips if you want. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so through the chair, um, yeah, Wainui Road, um, very aware of two slips on Wainui Road and another one on Wainui Matauri Bay Road. So is it specifically Wainui Road that you're interested in? Well, there's those three, but there are a number of others as well. Yeah, okay. Um, so speaking to those three, um, I believe that we've responded to you through an official information act request yeah. uh, last week yeah so you would have got that information from erica um in the phase three or priority three um slip program there are 40 slips that uh you know do um, get prioritized um, based on a range of factors um yeah i'm pleased to say that and we've been very near of Wainui road but pleased to say that we have two designs confirmed for um Wainui and Wainui Matauri Bay Road. There is one site on Wainui Road though that has a, a huge amount of wetland impacted. Um, and so that one there we are um, reassessing uh, the design or just going through the, con you know, the concept options for design because uh, there is the potential for delay consenting to the, the wetlands and we're trying to see if we can design that will avoid any further delays. Uh, but what you can expect to see is for works to commence on Wainui and Wainui Matauli Bay Road uh, early next year. Um, so that work will be awarded before the end of this year. Um, and that and, and all going well, that third site on Wainui Road uh, will be the same. We're just getting organised around confirming the design for that now. Well, can you explain to me why you haven't done any of the other minor projects so, so for more than two years? Through three years, Chair. The, so the Whanau District Council took back um, management of its roading network on the 1st of July this year from the, from the Northern Transport Alliance. Um, so since that time, we've been putting in place programs, and one of the programs that we, we have got in place is a, is a dig-out program. And to your point, yeah, there hasn't been uh, dig-out rounds been undertaken in the district for a number of years, mainly because of funding issues, and council does have more significant funding. So, in respect of Wainui Road, there's 40 sites uh, on Wainui Road that we've identified um, as requiring dig outs. Uh, those those works are now I've got them detailed in front of me. Uh, we've just had the contractors prioritise those works, and we're going through a process of at a district wide level prioritising those, and we'll start work on those. Um, not necessarily on Wainui Road, but on the whole program within the next month and complete as much as we can over this period. But it'll be a three year program. So council does have more funds now. Council's now managing its own um, its own transport network um, back at a district level. So we're able to, to look at these sites more specifically now. Um, well, I was totally unaware that there was someone else in charge of the road. I understood it was the council. Oh, you're talking about NTA previous yeah. slot? Yeah. yeah. 
Anyway, I hope that allays some of your concerns. This is, um, we've got a problem right across the district with this type of failure, and it relates largely to um, not enough money in the budget for drainage, just that basic stuff, which, so we're listening to the Minister and back to basics is the message. Well, the Minister's, the minister's made a lot of fine talk, so I hope you're actually going to get some money out of it. And we've got it, but it's going to take time. Yeah. But thank you very much for your submission and coming to see us. That's time's up. And we'll move on to the next one. Okay. You're well. welcome to stay or leave. Um, yeah. up to thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's the relating to road safety education. <laughs> and Angie's in the room. And here we have Jody online. Jody Bates. There she is. The floor is yours when you're ready. I have a presentation Yeah, we're hitting on that. <laughs> we'll start the clock when it jumps up. <laughs> Hopefully it works. Okay, um, so this is, can we click it to the next one, please? This is who we are. Um, so Far North Rep, sorry, um, my name is Ange Waitohi. I am the Far North District's Road Safety Advisor. And what that means is um, Jody Beach and I, we both manage the road safety contract. She's the manager and I bring all the pieces together and she looks after the contract side. So our road safety um, team, this is who we are. Final free in Kaitai, building safer communities in Kaitai as well. Hauoro Hokianga, Te Hauoro Ngāhui, Moriwe Christian Fellowship, Ngāti Hine Health Trust, My Life in Tūrunanga or Whaingaro. So we cover the whole district with our road safety portfolio on. It just cut through it, thanks. Um, this is what we delivered in July, from July 20 to June 24. Um, our focus areas have been alcohol and drugs, speed, young drivers, high-risk drivers, restraints, fatigue, conditions, and distractions. The next column shows what we were contracted to do, the first numbers, and what we actually delivered as a district team within the far north. The third column is our new contract because of the cuts in um, our money in that we've we're going to try and do a little bit less, but more bang for your buck. In the focus areas, where it's got those numbers next to it, we uh, we work off a community risk register 2023. And those numbers mean the far north are in the top 10. So for instance, um, alcohol and drugs, we're third in the whole of the country. We're third in speed, we're third, uh, second in young drivers, first in restraints. So those restraints are not just child restraints. They're when we have our fatalities, um, they're also people who aren't wearing their seatbelts. So this is pretty much just the snapshot of what we do or don't or try to do. Um, can I get you to flip the next one, please? We might have to just flip. So this is what our social cost, or at the moment cost, um, per fatality is 4.9 million. Um, reported serious crashes, those are the numbers there in the reported mining crash. So that's our average cost for each, every time something happens on our far north district road. This is what it costs our community. Um, yep, and the next one. And just so sorry, on that note, on that last one on social costs, um, a bit of a celebration we've had this this morning with our district teams is that there is no, there was no serious fatalities for that weekend throughout the whole country. And um, yeah, so everyone was going yay a little bit. Um, our expertise within our Opu across the whole far north district, we've got two STMS. Um, site traffic management supervisors who are non-practicing, three qualified restraint technicians, two others in the wider scope of that are not in our teams as such. 
seven driving instructors, two CDTOs. So those are the community testing officers. We've got one, one in Kaitai, one in Kitty and we also have um, one at Tikuna and Kaikohe, who is not part of our out this Opu, but is still part of our road safety team. Um, we have within our Opu the four volunteer fire brigades, three AA operators that are reinstating their qualifications because we are looking at bringing a mobile testing unit up into the far north to be able to go into our um, areas like Te Hapu and out to Russell and over those ways where people can't get into an AA testing space to do their theory testing. Um, we've got four administrators throughout the whole group who look after our, our, our contracts and 15 facilitators all up who deliver the road safety programs. And then there's our partners who we, who we work with within the wider scope. So we work locally, regionally and nationally. Um, a big one for our group is the DCN, which is the Driving Change Network. It's an advocacy group for driver education and um, for equity and e equity and accessibility to be able to get the driver's license. We have a seat on the steering committee at the national level, so we get to talk to like the ministers and whoever else will listen to the far north. We also have a seat on the NZAA Northland Council. So myself and um, and we sit in that space so we can be pushed for far north district as well as Auckland. But my passion, or our passion, my passion has always been the far north and what we can have up here. Um, the next one, please. And these, are, this is just a little bit of highlights. I'm not sure how much we can get through, but over the last 21 to 24, we've managed to do uh, basketball pop-ups in Okanone. Um, road safety week in Whangarei, we started down there. Um, and this is a big one for us, is the Community Driver Testing Officers Trial. 16th of June, we used our three police partners and pushed it out in Kaitaia. 11th of August, we did it in Kirikiri. So we started off with three testing officers who were police, um, Murray Hodson from Whangarei, um, Jeff Cramp from over in Nohokianga, and the other one was um, Uncle Pat Davis. They can only do one day a month, which was better than nothing, and now we've, we've got our own testing officers. That's how Kesa from Nkaiku we got up got through to do that. Um, Opo Whānau Day, we've done those sort, that sort of thing around basketball and, and talk about road safety. Uh, Matariki Remembrance Walk, we, we kicked this off last year in Kaitaia and it was really just to remember those we've lost in Northland on our roads and then we did it in Wairua this year. Motorcycle Awareness Month we've done in Wairua as well, so this is all our whole scope as a road safety team. And we've got a billboard that we've put up in Kaitai around our one tier two mini. There is a car that drives around in the far north with a one tier two mini banner all over it in road safety. Um, Waitangi Day, we were there this year after yeah, a few years out of that space. And then Moirua checkpoints, we do those on a regular basis. Our, our Kawakawa Moirua team do that a lot. Um, and our Manganui Festival. We've been there as well, just doing um, our fatal vision goggles as well. As this one, our Driving Change Network, um, we won a little um, for her for best relationship building strategies. So, yeah, that's us in a nutshell. Thanks, Angie. We've given you a bit extra time because it is important and um, the item does come up and the public gets excluded. Later on, so we can't talk much about it yet. Mm -hmm. Our staff are working on it. So, any questions? Angie, you um, mentioned that uh, you're going to do a little try, try and do your making with a little bit less. But um, can you re remind me over the last couple contracts you've presented to us on? How much more you do 
that is unpaid, do you are you able to quantify how much that's going to be this, you know, going into this contract? And how much how much money Jody? How much it will be provided to Finals District Council that's unpaid? Uh, yeah, I can um, attempt to answer that. I'm not sure if you guys can hear me okay. Yes. Uh, I think in regards to the delivery program, it will all depend on the uh, funding uh, over the three-year three, three year period. And the reason I say that is we can't put that program together until we understand that um, in regards to personnel. I think what's most important in regards to our program is that we have a whole team on the ground. And unless we have the funding to... Um, sustain that we we're not going to know whether you know like what the program numbers look like I can say though that uh, out of all the district groups there's not one that doesn't go uh, above and beyond however you know some of the organizations really aren't large corporate organizations they're community based uh, and therefore many do run on a bit of a smell of an oily rag um, what we want to make sure is that we maintain and retain the skill set that we have in the district um, if we lose if we go to if we reduce the funding too much we're going to lose that expertise that we've been able to build over the uh, 20 years of holding the road safety promotions education contract in the far north district so that's a huge risk i think for um, our community organizations but also our whole far north district community uh, without that personnel we are not going to be able to reach the people that we really need to reach uh, to see behavior change in regards to driving safer that. Anybody else? Yeah, um, thank you. It, as, as the chair said, it is very important. Um, but one thing that struck me in the north, and, and I noticed you didn't comment on it, is the uh, high fatality rates that we've actually got in the uh, far north roads compared with the rest of the nation. I think it's, um, it's um, what is it? It's quite, I think it's about twice as high here. If you were to put those figures out there, I think it becomes a bit of an eye opener. I, I think, sorry, sorry to interrupt, um, what Andrew was referring to with the communities at risk register and where uh, the far north is placed in, in those numbers of first, you know, first in restraints and third in young drivers, that's basically saying that that is the first, like the worst area for restraints in regards to fatalities. Um, so it is an indication that we really do have a high need for community-based education if we're going to see a change in our fatality rate. Once again, this cannot happen over a short period of time. It needs to happen over a sustainable length of time. And we all know that when it comes to education. Um, and if we drop the ball now, that we can, we can only predict it's going to get even worse for our district. Um, obviously, alongside our road safety education, we do work with our engineers um, and our in and enforcement partners. And so it is a three pronged approach. And without either of those three partners, we are going to see more fatalities. It's really difficult. I know in the, in the moment when we've got a funding uh, restraint, I suppose, excuse the pun, um, and we will do our best, but actually without the resources which need to be funded, we are going to see, unfortunately, an increase in those fatalities. Um, we've had um, support from our Australian colleagues who are trying to say, do not drop the ball on your education component, even though there's you know, a need for an increased enforcement and obviously our engineering in regards to our roads. But if we drop the ball on that education and working directly with our community, we will see an increase in fatality and the Far North District will be way up there as gold winners, unfortunately. Thank you, Jody. Jody. Um, We've allowed you a bit of additional time, but it is important. Uh, it is coming up later in, in the program today. So thank you for your presentation. And if you will be in touch, you might need some more information from you, but we'll let the staff deal with that. Thanks very much. Thank you. Can I just say a big thank you to the council for um, our Norfolk County roads getting done in Pangaru and Matamati? Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. All right.
Yeah, that's the message. Torch. It's not a mural of announcements because he's not here unless Kelly has anything. Uh, right. Confirmation of previous minutes. I don't know if someone move and is that the, we confirm the minutes of the last meeting. I'm a true and correct record. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone confirm anything in there that was not quite right? Everyone's happy, it's true and correct. All those in favour? Against. No. Next one, transport portfolio member reports. Councillor Court. Um, I have put on everybody's desk this morning. Thank you very much to Grace and to the Rob for me. This was given to me by Roddy from the Trevor of the Community Division. This is a survey that was taken on the safety camera um, for your meeting. Just in relation to that, I've previously reported to this council that 20% of the vehicles captured on the safety camera do not have a registration plate that matches the vehicle. Well, I have made this quite an issue with our MPs. And I have over the weekend received a letter from Superintendent Steve Greeley, Director of Road Policing Police National Headquarters. So all my jumping up and down and making a fuss has reached the ears of the police headquarters in Wellington. And they assure me that uh, that they are taking this seriously and they have shared our concerns with the Northland District Road Policing Manager, Inspector Anne-Marie Fitcher, for her further consideration. Uh, in addition to that, I attended the Automobile Association meeting in Pamaray this month, and one of our guest speakers was Senior Constable Jeff. Jeff, and forgive me, Jeff, I've forgotten your surname. Jeff and he said, we've got a bigger problem than number plates not matching the cars in Northland. He said, from a road policing inspector, what is an epidemic at the moment is people putting their registrations on hold and continuing to drive. So I am just letting you know that that is Barton. Neil Barton, not Jeff, Neil Barton. Thank you, Constable Neil Barton. Um, and the fortnightly beatings continue with uh, Rob as Steve and I and Rob and the team sit down and work on what the new roading contracts will look like. We have a gentleman's agreement in that group that what we talk about is so confidential for now, so I can't tell you what we're talking about. Um, but we are meeting every fortnight and we're making great progress. And the feedback that we've been receiving has been invaluable. So that's it for me. Thank you. Um, yes, similarly, I'm very pleased with Tanya, Rob, and the team with the work planning progress. And we're seeing some results and getting some very positive feedback from throughout the district, including from the contractors. Um, I travelled through to Wongaray for the Brenda and update, which was all highly confidential. But the um, if you keep up with the newsletters that NZTA produce, they they're very informative and you'll stay about as well in touch as I do. Went across to the Motor 2 Pungaroo um, slip site, the Priority 1 slips leasing, and yeah, that was a very good day. Interesting, just the, um, hard to describe, but the locals are really excited to see the work finally progressing, and this, the contractors and staff, I thought, were um, very pleased to be accepted by the community and have that. Um, support and what else was there oh and then driving across there of course um similar issues to the winery road with mr jane but uh, these are all the body three slips and i notice I'll, I'll get it in the update coming up shortly i'd imagine uh but yeah there's a lot of that work this program across there as it is for winery road that's all for me so unless there's any question oh i'll 
I'll move that. Can I have a seconder, please? John Esich. I do have, I do have a quick question. Uh, what, what, uh, thank you for those verbal reports. Just on the uh, report, you mentioned how safe, which piqued my interest, how safe are roads in, in our community? Because I've been hearing comments just, just recently, just a uh, bit. Um, and our community, and with 40% of the roads in our community is unsafe or very unsafe. What I'd like, and, and also the, there is the wearing of seatbelts and the following page and speeding from uh, safety issues in the community. It'd be nice to actually have a national comparison with that just to see how we're tracking. And I suspect our seat, just tracking on one, our seatbelt wearing at 26% considering that an issue. As we heard in the previous uh, presenter that we're we're leading the country on, on that issue in the negative, so, but it'd be nice to see what it looks like. Um, and also, for example, I just recently got a complaint of, um, I think it was a rally, you know, the NZTA rally somewhere in the in the bar north, and the caravan actually broke its axle when it hit one of our potholes, and the complaint was the road was so bad, um, um, find out where that is, and I'll let you know. <laughs> but, um, uh, Anya, but it was so it broke the axe off. That's how serious the event was. I'm sure you probably heard a comment on it. They're not, that's how you know, significant issues when that's happening. But you're all aware of it. So. All right. All those in favour of receiving those verbal reports? No. Against? Next is the. Um, not sure if we've got the water portfolio reports online. Matty, is Matty online? Yes. Matty, would you like to give us a verbal report on the on your water portfolio? I don't think Penitari will be available. Please call. Mr. No reports. We'll move on to the open resolutions. Can I have someone move and second the? We received a report, open resolution update for October, please. I'll move it. Second. Who's this? Page 18, yeah. Is there anything anybody wanted to bring up around to that? There's only two main aspects the speed safety camera for Proto and the uh, economic assessment of disposal of treated wastewater to land for Proto and Proto. Just a, a, a question or comment, just to cheer that all. That's all right. <laughs> the land disposal says both of these projects, there's no OPEX as the previous to, uh, previous um, allocation. So it's just as the land investigations and kind of progress significantly. I'm just wondering what the overall cost of this. These projects, are, you know, as we've seen in some estimates, are quite expensive. And um, yeah, uh, I do wonder whether there should be a or formal reporting to council of tracking to budget and also um, um, progress as well. That you may well sum up. Regular basis. Mm -hmm. In fact, that probably applies to all the high cost projects. I think I think we do have some of that. They've already done reporting on those costs and other projects are paying. Yes, we do have some, but we've also uh, discussed as a group as well needing to get uh, have more regular meetings um, once the financials come out and then reporting on those in a way that everybody can see all of our budgets. I think we we do present information on specific projects as requested overall, being able to demonstrate both our operational and capital budgets and progress against each month as we're we'll trying to get to. So hopefully we'll have that, if not sorted by next month, certainly in the new year. And I'll just have 
note here that um, in the chat, the water portfolio did not meet last week. So I think it's there. There might be one that no update. I'll follow up with those. There you can. So we just received that um, open resolution report. All those in favour? Against. Right, next item, page 21. Infrastructure abatement notices. And the recommendation is that we receive the report infrastructure abatement notices. Can I have someone to move and second that, please? I'll move. I'll second it. And do we have Simone in the room? Would you like to tell us what's going on there, Simone, please? Join the table or stand up, whatever you like. Oh, stand, stand up so that we can hear you. Morena hmm. Tato, uh, Kosamon Tom. Oh, no, Kosamon Owls more. So I was married. I, oh, I was married. My maiden name was Tom Lily. I'm now married. So I'm please don't use me while I. Um, I am the infrastructure consenting team leader. Yes, um, through the chair. Uh, this report is on the infrastructure abatement notices. The purpose is to provide to Tokoko with an update on progress made towards the removal of abatement notices from Northland Regional Council. A uh, quick summary in September last year, uh, Te Kaunihiro Te Kuzika Final District Council had four abatement notices. Abatement notices received from uh, Northland Regional Council. Uh, the abatement notices were for wastewater non compliances. As of September this year, three abatement notices uh, remain outstanding. Uh, the Kororarika Russell Wastewater Treatment Plant <coughs> abatement notice was cancelled by NRC in April this year after an upgrade to the ponds and commissioning of the ultraviolet unit. Uh, it is planned for monthly updates on the remaining abatement notices to be uh, provided to Te Koko and also uh, just an additional note there that monthly updates on remediation works to address the abatement notices are also provided to NRC. Um, through the chair, is there any questions on that report? You look any questions? questions? I do have, but I'll I'll I'll, I'll break for the next item because um, I think you're on the next item as well. So I'm going to yes. you just stay. But all those in favour of receiving that update, mm -hmm. it's right. item receive the report infrastructure consent compliance status. Um, I'll move that. Second, please. Yeah, please. Yeah, so yes, this is an add-on to the abatement notices, which is uh, now looking at the compliance status of all infrastructure consents granted by Northland Regional Council. Uh, and sorry, I printed mine off black and white. So, and hopefully in your copy, there is a colored version that shows um, the compliance status from August, 2023 to August, 2024. Uh, in August, 2024, seven of the eight water schemes and four of the four of the 15 wastewater schemes were fully compliant with their consent conditions. Council also holds resource consents for various district facilities activities, for example, marriage on airports, on-site wastewater solid waste. No additional abatement notices or infringement notices were received in August 2024, so nothing above and beyond like the last report. But uh, just a note, due to the timing of this report here today, only August was captured as September had not been analysed. We just have one question online there. What do the question marks mean? Uh, the, there was some in high year water. Yep. So the on page 26, there is a key and outlining what the different colours mean and the question mean question mark means no data provided for that one. Thank you. Um, where it says no data provided for that month, it's a real concern that we don't have the data for the. I know it's um, drinking water quite here, but um, yeah, the yeah, the that's um, water that supplies a heck of a lot of people over summer. 
and and people swim in the you know I don't know is it the recording of the compliance of the drinking water or the compliance of the discharge to the river? I, from my understanding, um, through the chair, it's uh, reporting on the consent conditions. So, so everything. Yeah. yeah. So can we like what can we do to make sure that we are getting that data over um, February and March? What? Yeah, 2024. 20, oh. So through the chair, get going down, going, going forward. Yeah. Well, I believe it's in those next steps that is covered that we need to recruit for a compliance advisor and to do a whole lot of consents and conditions and processes. So that's something to get into. Good question. Sorry. I understand that it's um, not somebody in this organisation that does the data collection, though. It's, con you know, the contractors, so. Yeah, I'll ask you to follow up. Sorry. Uh, through the chair, correct. So I think the question really is why has that information not been received and we'll follow that up with our contractors? What else did you have, Simone? Uh, you the next steps. Did you want to walk us through that? Yeah, so on page 26, I've outlined uh, some next steps, which is recruit for the compliance officer role. Uh, because this report and the last report sits, I believe, with the compliance advisor, um, which is vacant at the moment, and then validate the status of all FNDC free water consents with uh, Northland Regional Council, validate and update the data in CSU, which is the system that uh, tracks all our um, all of FND's consents, and an audit of FNDC on three water consents and conditions, so that's around district facilities, and establish compliance programs such as monitoring and sampling so we can uh, get to a point where all our consents are all compliant. Good, Jeff. Yeah, There's a user chat question. Yeah, I do have a question, and then if it's sort of like two. Um, if you look at page 25, in over the page of graffiti, graffiti as well. You see the ones that, the, the bad ones, Aiapara Wastewater, which has been noted with all the red dots and, um, and also Panadi Wastewater. Um, but then there is uh, 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 yeah, Ramani Water, which has got quite a few yellows. There's some others that are consistently yellow as well, including Kai Pop. Right there and and uh, I'm just wondering, uh, and there's four of those. I'm just wondering what potential risk we may be facing um, with a abatement notice of being thrown on those ones as well. But that's one question. So, what risks is there of that or that being addressed? And secondly, um, when I look at some of these things that are occurring here, and you've given the next steps, and this is probably more directed at the CE. Such as recruit for compliance officer and so on. And I look at all that and think this is really should be BA, BA, you know, business as usual, BAU. And we've been in three waters for 35 years. And I do wonder where is the you know operational excellence and continuous improvement when I look at these stats here, they don't look that good. And I wonder what's been going wrong and is our processes and procedures being addressed so that we can get on top of it. Um, you know, ahead of the schedule when consenting is needed, and we're doing it on time, allowing for consultation so that more can be done. Did you get a question out of that, Simon? There was a question. <laughs> Firstly, <your> apologies, no. <laughs> no. Well, I'll be Did you have a question, Councillor Zesek? Sure. What risk are we facing? I know it's all of those yellow ones which have not yet reached the full fruition of abatement notices. And secondly, what are, and that's more for the CEO, what are the internal processes we're doing in there? So that we can get a really smooth running organization because it looks like we're not doing that. Would you like Tanya to through the chair? Um, a couple of things. I think that one thing that we've noticed as well is the systems that we have been using only pick up things that are uh, the system isn't that good. Um, so I think next steps uh, out of this report will be differentiated. Sorry, having the differences between the conditions that we're non-compliant with 
some of those are reporting or they'll be um, that we haven't got a working group. So I think it would be beneficial for us to separate out the condition non-compliances and the quality non-compliances. Um, so the quality is more of a risk or potentially a risk for us rather than the condition non-compliance that is an issue. I think that's probably the first step that we that we need to be able to do. Um, and then secondly, ensuring that we are getting the reporting and understanding when we get that reporting and it is orange, why is it orange? Um, so we were aware that we need to do some more work on understanding that, but I, I don't have um, a good, I guess, um, a really good reason as to why it's not as... Like why we're not all green, I actually couldn't tell you, but we'll do some work into understanding why it's not and how do we get it all green and stay green. Yeah, maybe our SFM would probably. Council like Kappa. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. My uh, concern mainly is having listened to the report indicating that there's the employment of a person who carry out this work. So that tells me is by the employment of this person, is it going to fix what we already that's already happened? The second part is what is the primary issue why the colours aren't flicking from red to green? Is it the systems? Is it the, how we how our council are actually trying to ratify the, the issue? What is the, the primary because I can't picture a person being employed will eventually fix this. Is it the re reading of the data? Is it the information that's going from the data to the actual strategy to what is it? I'll, uh, through the chair, hand it over to uh, Tanya Proctor to answer. Um, so through the chair, it's a combination of things, but until we can work out exactly what the detail is behind that, um, we don't know. It's not just one person. Like these these colours have been these colours for a number of years now. So I don't, and we've had somebody in that role. We haven't had anybody in that role for six to eight weeks, maybe. So it's it's not just because we have someone in there. What we what we will be able to do better when we have the new person in there that we have a number of great candidates for, so I'm confident that we will recruit to that role very, very shortly, is all the little conditions. And I think Deputy Mayor Stratford made, um, was aware of 140 odd non-compliances. And I remember leaving a meeting thinking, we don't have that many non-compliances, but, but those are the things that the compliance officer will fix. They will be, there is a report due and it hasn't been provided to NRC on the date that it is due. Um, and so that that is contributing to those yellows, um, those three abatement purposes that we have. We have work in design uh, and out to tender just about uh, to remedy those significant issues as well. But we do need to have a look at, the, it's a combination of things. It's not any one thing that is creating those colours. Question? This is the Alice Moore House. Good to see <laughs> Would it be possible through you, Tanya, if we could get this report expanded in the future, capturing those five bullet points that sit there in next steps and actually have regular reporting on those steps so we can get some governance comfort that we're taking steps towards addressing all the yellow and red dots on this page. Because like my colleague, Mr. Vucic, I've sat here for a very long time and I don't feel like we're moving the dial as much as we should, particularly in the um, critical border infrastructure that goes to human health. Thank you. Yeah, I just some of the commentary. The next step, they sort of highlight what we need. The border is clearly back in focus, um, although there's government still playing. But we need to um, identify and quantify the risks, as Councillor Busey brought up, upgrade our systems, monitor and report regularly. Anyway, all those in favour of receiving that report, thank you, Simone. And thank you, anyway, there's one more. Good. Well, <laughs> Love it. Okay, thank you. Right, so the next is on page 27, 6.4. Work infrastructure working group. 
date that we received. Someone move. Shelly and Nish. Further, Chair, uh, yes, on page 27 is the uh, report on infrastructure working group updates. Um, it was asked, I believe, for a uh, information report on on, on this COPA. Uh, so for those who do not know, if you already know, awesome. Uh, but FNDC have multiple working groups with iwi, hapu and community representatives, especially in the three water space. To date, there are six active working groups where FNDC are actively engaging. There are a number of consents with conditions requiring working groups to be in place or sent to regular updates. Resourcing challenges have led to non-compliances for this uh, for some of these conditions, uh, for this condition for some of these consents. Uh, I, I hope that has come through on A3 for everyone. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, please refer to the online. That's awesome. Um, there was a lot to jam pack in, but through the chair, I'll leave it there um, and happy to take any questions. Yes, I will take it. Um, one of the concerns I had with the working groups, I understand why they're there, but it just seems like um, reporting back to the council table seems to be missing a bit. Uh, Councillor Stratford, Deputy Mayor has a question. Yeah. Thank you. This is so, so good to see. And um, yeah, as Councillor McNally said, um, I think we just need that. Um, updates to us will come, especially ahead of uh, when there's a big budgetary ask, you know, yeah. Yeah, a budgeted fund or something, yeah, they're everywhere. Um, but I just wondered, should something like the five-year water treatment plant one, um, and that isn't fully established yet, but it has had, there have been some meetings towards a new plant because the old one was aging, you know, risk of um, not enough drinking water to meet the demand, no storage on site, risk of flooding, you know, damaging the electrical system, or taking out the intake. Um, I I might have missed it in here, but um, I couldn't see the pie here, water treatment plant any information on that and I'm just wondering where it's whether it would sit in here under table two working groups established through providing input into FNDC infrastructure consent applications going forward or have, is it a project that fell out of this LTP but I understood there was still some carry forward for the Pioneer Water Treatment Plant project. Um, through the chair the project is still the project uh, and it does have a number of hapu representatives who have had a number of hui. Um, I don't believe that there has been a terms of reference signed as yet, uh, and it should be a project update, though. So even if it's not formalised, that could well Next be time. included in this one. Cool. When, when do you think we'll how often? Sorry if I missed that again. Monthly. <laughs> You're going to miss the end spot. Thank you. Love it. Yes. Usage and then uh, yeah, just just one quick question. First off, any comments I'm making not directed at you personally, you know, you know that. Um, the public consultation I really agree with. I think that's quite uh, well, the consultation of the wet group, I should say, I really agree with. And one of the reasons why I see them as being important is, is when you have a public consultation that it will speed up that process and, and streamline it. And that's the question. Uh, are these uh, working groups effectively doing that? Uh, through the chair, I believe so. Um, it'll be in the next report in terms of the consent, um, consenting work program updates. For example, the Kaitaia Wastewater Treatment Plant Resource Consent that went out for public consultation earlier on this year and was through working with that I believe we only, um, FNDC only received two submissions and we had not received any from Evie and Hapu, um, even though it would have been great to have one in support, uh, I still take it as a one that there was none in um, opposition. So I do believe these are very vital uh, to getting community input, especially with our Evie and Hapu communities and making sure that um, cultural values are being um, 
looked into and aligned and that we have that support and lo local knowledge as well. So uh, pers my personal opinion is, yes, they have been quite effective. Thank you. That's great. Councillor Halkard, how are we Oh, tēnā, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou. Yeah, uh, really appreciate this report. Thank you very much, um, uh, Tanya, um, Simone. Um, just from the Ahipara, our little working group that sort of gets together every two or three weeks, um, just following up on, um, they asked me to ask, about the security fence, you know, uh, I think approval's been given for a security fence around the SU, SCUV plant and they just want to make sure that happens so that nobody tutus or robs the place and the other part was uh, in the lead up for the annual plan um, they're sort of waiting on um, confirmation of a budget to go towards um, uh, reconstructing um, the um, wetland area um, and the results of the um, the monthly results about the um, E. coli uh, presence in 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 the um, pond there is like hugely transformed as a result of this SCUV um, plant. So that's been good. Um, and I, I'd also like to ask to be involved with the uh, Kaitaia, Hihi, uh, and Taipa plants. Um, you know, I, I, maybe I can't make them all, but I'd really like to be. Um, involved in those little um, community group meetings um, just to keep, yeah, just to keep um, myself busy, I suppose. But uh, yeah, that's all I really want to say for, on behalf of um, Ahipara. Thank you. Councillor Kappa. Thank you, Mr Chair. Look, I, I just wondered, I just picked up something in terms of the current situation and how the consultation processes have been conducted. Can you just tell me what's, um, what's the strategy to activate some of these meetings? Because I noticed in the column of current situation, there hasn't been much engagement, if anything. As that was table, Three, the non-active working groups. Uh, yes. Through the chair, in all honesty, that's um, something that is going to need to be worked internal and we'll hopefully have an update, Poss probably not at the next meeting, but the meeting afterwards in terms of um, seeing what is needing to be established and where the resources are to be able to implement those. Because I note that in the following column, there's a proposed uh, compliance advice. Yes. Yeah. So that goes to my earlier point around getting um, a dedicated resource to come in, put a strategy in place, and implement it as soon as, as possible. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think that just highlights the comment I made earlier about the disconnect between this data and the um, what you're talking to the working group is more, I think, which is important. Just think I understand that the um, EC unit or the trial in Bopara might should be operating early in November. So we'll look forward to seeing those results. And Rawani plant has to be in place in December, is what I've been told. Please update me if I'm wrong. You're, I think you're up again, Simone, so according to what you told me a minute ago. So the infrastructure consenting program, please. Can we have a second for that, please? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do. I'll go back. All those in favour receiving the infrastructure working group update report. Okay. Any against? Thank you. Now we can jump. Thank you. Through the chair, thank you. This is my last report for this meeting. Uh, it's to give an overview and update on the infrastructure work program. Uh, so as per the executive summary on page 38, 
FNDC holds a substantial number of res resource consents for three waters and district facilities. Uh, applications to renew expiring consent should be lodged with NRC no later than three months prior to the expiry date. Applications can be placed on hold to allow, allow time to collect technical information and complete processes such as engagement, which quite a lot of um, the, the wastewater consents status, that's where a lot of them are at. Uh, I will leave it there though, um, and through the chair, I'm happy to take the questions. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Research. Um, sort of what I said before. Um, you see, the application, this, this is where I think we have process can be tidied up. You make a comment on page 39 yep. that a renewal process must be initiated at least two years prior to the consenting process. And um, and the consent can, can take up to two years. As I said before, having the, having the groups there, I'm hoping that the two year consenting can be you know, made more efficient to reduce that time. But, there's a bit of a disconnect because we end up with, um, we've got seven, actually eight, uh, eight expired consents. And we, we can put the application three months, three months after two expiry date, which we do put it in. And then it's another, but then we put it on hold for two years while we go through this process. Can we actually do it so we have an active consent all the way through? And that's what I'm saying. You can't. So that's what can we do to make that? We don't have with expired consents because it doesn't look quite right. Uh, further, Chair, thank you, Councillor Vincent, for um, that observation. Uh, further, Chair, I came into this role about a year and a bit ago. So, unfortunately, some of these consents and the program of them were out of my control. But going forward, the ones that are really important. Uh, for me personally, is getting the Fatu Fifi resource consent that is is expiring in November next year to have everything in place by uh, May next year, so we can uh, lodge it, go straight to public notification. So we have been working with, um, uh, we have engaged, uh, sent an email out through to Ngāti Kahu, which they have informed us to engage uh, directly with Hatitai Marangai uh, Marae. So we have met with them once in another on-site meeting in the next couple of weeks. So um, it's, I can't speak for those other applications, but the applications that we're renewing going forward, it is the team's uh, goal to do, as you said, uh, to lodge and get it through and not to be placed on hold for two, three years. Thank you. So, so well, that's music to my ears. I think you won the chocolate fish from, from me today. Uh, so that's the condition. I want to see. Another question from Councillor Tucker Lavera. Kilda. Hi. Kilda, Kilda Tato. Um, just, uh, I was wondering if um, Tani or Simone could just give me sort of like a a, a, a briefing on, um, you know, how we've got the campgrounds. I've noticed that, um, you know, there's always money that has to put. Can you just tell us what, what happens about camping grounds? I see one earlier for Topol Bay. So can you just tell me about that one? Thanks. Through the chair, is in regards to the Hauwater campground and the Tauranga Bay campground? Aye. Oh, come on. Uh, I don't want to What's your question again, through the chair? Can you just give me a briefing, please, about um, what is our role for the camping grounds and and meeting all these things? Because I see that we also have to allocate budgets for them as well? Yes, so through the chair, um, I believe both Hobwater Campground and the Tauranga Bay, Bay Campground are, are owned by FMDC and then are leased out to the, the respective campground. So uh, although um, it's leased out, FNDC, uh, it is FNDC's responsibility to renew the consents and to uh, operate and maintain Thank you. Marama now. Kia ora. Kia ora. Question through you, Tanya, please. When it says public notification requested, who is requesting? I'm not quite clear when I go through this that it seems some require consent, some don't. I'm just not clear on 
Who's asking? Through the chair, can I please defer to someone in this instance, Council of Court? Through, through the chair, so that is uh, essentially my team, so that's on behalf of um, FNDC um, to request that, uh, especially these wastewater, these big uh, contentious applications that uh, we request Northern Regional Council to publicly notify, so um, it doesn't look like FNDC are hiding anything, it's for full transparency. So there will be um, in instances where some applications will need to be publicly notified and others will not. For example, the Hove Water Campground, Tauranga Bay Campground, they are water classed under the proposed regional plan as a controlled activity, so the scale and significance is uh, not the same level as a wastewater. So uh, that's why we would not publicly um, notify those applications. Does that um, answer your question, Councillor? Yes, it does. Thank you. Kilda. Any other questions? All those in favour of receiving that report? I'll say aye. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all those against, then. <laughs> Carried. Thank you, Simon. Can I go, Tony? Now we move on to page 42, conditional assessment summary for Council Halls. And I believe we have taken a number. You can either join us at the table or stand up there, whatever you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. I follow some of the lead and in front. Um, Lena, um, Katie May, Asset Manager for District Facilities, and this report is to provide. A summary of the condition of our halls assessed in the 2021. You want to give a summary of what your concerns are, or you just like to respond to questions? Uh, through the chair, there were a couple of meetings ago, uh, I think it might have been. Chair Ward had mentioned um, that the information had been requested on a number of occasions and hadn't been received. So this report is in response to that request of the condition of the halls. Three years ago. Excellent. Question. Yeah, Councillor Ward, you want to move the signal? I'll move. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that, please, and then I won't forget. I'll see you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Court. Thank you. And then I see Councillor Foy on the line. It's good to have this report. Ah, thank you. Um, but please don't take this as a criticism, but I am really concerned when I read under next steps that this report does not include any future planned renewal works, date, or budgets that they are yet to be determined as part of the next LTP process. We've just adopted the LTP. So are we suggesting that we're not planning to do anything for three years? Six years later. Uh, through the Chair, there is uh, halls that are being worked on in the current LTP, um, and the future ones haven't been costed out in order to provide a proper financial portfolio and to look at the renewal component of that. So they're not, the, the, the 2737 LTP hasn't been adopted and formally planned for at this time. So that's what that refers to. I'm just concerned that some of the proposed delivery dates are a significant way up. When we're talking 2030, 2029, 2029, I am uncomfortable um, with having these assets that we have the public going into uh, and they're mouldy, we don't have accessible toilets, they're not compliant, there's no safety glass, things like that. I just wonder if we need to have a workshop on how we expedite some of these, these matters. If I'm made through the chair, um, happy to have a workshop. I, I just, she says reluctantly, sounding very re reluctant. Um, the current plan was on the basis of storm recovery, those things, and, and in flight. So 
the fact that we don't have anything in the next couple of years is based on that it wasn't in flight. We will spend the next two financial years working out, re revisiting the condition of taking it through the process of what does it look like to ensure that we build the right budgets for inclusion in the next capital program, in the next long-term plan, sorry. So we're not, it's not that we're not going to do anything for the next three years, we will, or two years, sorry, we will spend the next two years planning well for the following LTP. So essentially you're saying you're going to identify remedial works required and then prioritise So we can link from the life, which could be a simple as a replacement. Respond to that through you, Mr. Chair. I, I do accept mm -hmm. the government gave eight councils the ability to have a truncated LTP based on the fact still recovering. And we have a lot of work to do in that space. But along the line, somewhere along the line, we dropped the ball on our social houses and we've dropped the ball on our halls. Now, if someone was to be harmed because We've got this overarching umbrella that says, well, we've got to get out of jail free card because the government gave us a front page of LTP to concentrate on our storm recovery. We know over here we have publicly accessible buildings that are not safe. I am uncomfortable with that. But this, this was done in 21. Didn't we have a 21 to 31 10 year plan? Are we still following that? Just three year ones, more specifically around. Storm damage. I we've got a ten year. Comments on page forty two. This report does not include any future plan renewal work dates and budgets as they are yet to be determined. So I'm unclear at the moment whether or not we actually have a handle on what we need to do and how we're going to fund it and who's going to do the work. Because I think some of these we're not even keeping. <laughs> Um, thank you. And thank you for bringing this report. Um, it's great to have more information. Uh, I'd just like to start off with saying that I concur with Councillor Court in her um, remarks about the financials in the Ford Works program. Uh, just this morning, I've written an email about the Awanui Hall. Uh, Belinda also notes in the chat that Kaimuru Hall has been put in the Eastern Ward uh, in the paper, that's incorrect, that's a Northern Ward Hall. Uh, the main concern I have is that, in my view, the priority of works for which works and which halls is done first is currently being uh, determined by staff. And the reason that I say this is because um, I've raised it about the health and safety issues for Awanui Hall for uh, over six months now, and also highlighted that um, the usage of Lake Ohia Hall, which has got funding currently in the long-term plan, is less of a priority in terms of health and safety um, from the community's perspective. Um, there's been no paper to the community board to determine the priorities, and also to look at the work program and what should be done first. Um, I'd just like the staff to respond about that because at the moment Darwinui Hall ceiling is falling down, the bathroom ceiling is falling down, and no one can actually use the hall. And yet the Lake Ohia Hall, which is hardly used, is being prioritised in the work programme. Can I please have comments on that? And just noting that I'm going to do a notice of motion to address this issue. Thanks, Councillor Ford. Tanya will respond. Uh, through the chair, so the third priority was projects that are in flight. That Awanui Hall at that point wasn't ready to be delivered. Um, we will always, in the interim, fix any health and safety issues. Sorry, I should have I should have clarified that. Um, and but we also have the ability to bring funding forward if there is if we make progress on design that needs to be done. Um, and the money is available and there is enough room in the work program to deliver that. So we're, we're happy to have that conversation. Um, again, the criteria that we set at that point that Awadui Hall wasn't included, more than happy to have conversations now that we've made part way through this financial year. Um, but again, would 
always address health and safety issues. Thank you. So, so I just wanted to say that staff are aware of those health and safety issues for the last six months. I've sent five emails now, and it's great to see this paper, but it's evident that that isn't happening operationally. And and also, I'm not sure who's deciding on the criteria about what makes it a priority or not. That should be decided, in my view, from the community boards that have the delegation and also the council, not at an operational level. Are there any comments on that? Thanks, Councillor Foy. Um, I, I think given this report's just landed, we'll get the staff to catch up and drive what we can do relating to the long-term plan, our current plan, what the budgets allow, and then sort out what we can actually do. Um, I have Adele and then Councillor Deputy Mayor Stratford. Oh, you such said before Adele. You might not have heard him. I'm happy to go after Adele. Okay, hey, thank you very much for this report. It's good to see this. Thank you. Um, a couple of the questions around Lego here. So the money in the in the LTP for this year um, for delivery is around ninety eight thousand. So will that actually fix all the um, the items that are listed in the report and bring it back into out of the red? That's one question. And the follow, and also Monganui Hall's not looking very flash. So um in in the report anyway. So if these were we were assessed back in was it 2021? Um that's three years ago. So um so the next assessment will be when? 26. And also um you say in the report that Awanui Hall is priority two. And you've got a um, a planned delivery in 2026, but in the LTP, there's no numbers in there. So I guess you have to have an assessment done of, of the numbers for the LTP, I guess. But that's 2026 is a long time to wait for Awanui Hall if there's actually health and safety issues. So those, those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Adele. Given the reports just landed, as I said a minute ago, I think the next one should show a bit more information. So we need to know what's budgeted, etc. Yes, just to yes, yeah, just quickly. Um, I actually have agreement with it's look. You look at this and you see a state of disrepair and neglect. Unfortunately, the best all I've seen, best community all I've seen, by the way, is one lucky council not upkeep. So I do wonder how can we do. Better than this. I'm pleased you got this report here, which shows the state. There was another part to the request that the community's board have been asking for for a long time, and that was for uh, the four committees to receive ongoing financial report in detail, including the current de deprivation reserves, if any, and um, and just to spend and everything else that's going there and what was in the long term plan. That I don't believe they received even to the date. To this date, I know the uh, Kaika Hokinga community board was so frustrated they wanted the delegations for the governance of the halls to be in, in the community board hands. Uh, and that has not happened either. Um, it wasn't even discussed. So I think we need to do something. I don't know the, the answer here, but if we're going to have a workshop, and I'm not uh, as governance, and I'm not against that, I think that's a good idea. But what I'll be looking for is how we can solve this if you re realizing we have. Uh, financial constraints uh, and be prepared to look at alternatives. I know many of the communities have said we will pick this up and we can do it cheaper. Your costs are too high. And so let's, I think, be, be creative in all of this, but we have to get out yeah, on top of this because otherwise, we have assets that are deteriorating Thank still you. further. Thank you. If I may, through the Chair, Councillor Research, the financial information I understand that's being sought. Is being worked on by the finance team and should be reviewed in the next one. Thank you. Two weeks. That was a question. Of that. I just know Thank you, Mr. Chief. Thank you. Right. The recommendation is to see that report. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Um, Deputy Mayor. Um, since 2013, the halls have been delegated to community boards. So I'm um, hoping that this information will be going to them with that um, added 
you know, financial timeline. Um, but also, I think um, us receiving this now is really, and, and it's not your fault, you're the one left holding the baby. <laughs> we should have got this as well over a year ago before we were talking about long term plan. Um, yeah. And the other thing is um, the, 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 you know, red, amber, green. I don't even know whether that means it has a code of compliance or, or what, you know. So there's it's just we we governance, but we we like to know quickly whether it's met how, you know, whether it beats the building act, the fire act. But yeah, so um next time I get to have a look at this, I I love that information clearer than me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. All those in favour? Certificate of public use. Against? Oh, oops. Sorry. Whoop. You need to just yell. Wake everyone up. You don't want to be started. Tuesday. Stuff, anyway, next item 6.7 orders KPIs. I'll move. Moved by, and somebody's away. Tilly's away. Tanya, would you like to just tell us a quick story on what's going on here? Or should we just take the report as read and any questions? Yes, please. I second it, sorry. Right. The Author of the report, Tui is away, and he doesn't. So, if there's any questions, she will attempt to answer. I did go through it, and um, it's interesting what people are happy with and what they're not so happy with. Other than that, doesn't tell me a lot. Deputy Mayor Stratford. It would be good to have this report alongside the customer satisfaction survey because this this reads better than the customer satisfaction survey for the most part and um yeah it's good how often are we going to see this monthly so, thank you any other questions if not we'll put it to the vote we see the report all the happy eyes all those in favor against Next question is transportation maintenance renewals update from uh, PRG contractors on page. So can we can I have a mover and seconder that we receive those, please? Yeah, mate. <laughs> yeah. uh, Mr. Chair, just for your information, we've invited the Representatives each of the contracts attend the workshop um, for a short period of time each, so that oh, members right. can ask specific questions about the about the reports. And if that's successful, we'll do that if you want. That sounds good. Thank you. All right. So we'll take them as read. Are there any questions specifically around the this relates to the September work program? I did think I saw something there that was that looked like there was a bit of a forward work program as well. But if they're coming this afternoon, that'd be great. So, did anyone have questions? I don't think we better raise it, so I'll raise it here. And if you want to roll me out of order, that's fine. Um, but we need to be receiving a report on what is happening on our state highway network too, and whether or not we can ask for that. Me and I were talking this morning, and she's raised concerns that there are no safety signs up on Turnpike Hill. I raised concerns about the quality of the jobs at Waipa. So I do would like a forum for us to be able to receive that information and provide feedback to NBTA where we think the contract might be failing. Okay, I'll send an email directly to Mr. Martin on behalf. Oh, yeah. so, so, don't have a question, but I'm oh. pleased to see you. We're only taking questions, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, the 
Well, I'm more pleased to see uh, 507 culverts, for example, on base. The work that's been done, of course, you know, just by the people as you heard from one of them, uh, they really appreciate the work being done there. So thank you very much for that. That's happening. Your basic stuff. See, it's not that hard, is it, really? That's my comments. We'll apply it to the halls as well. Any other questions? If not, I'll. All those in favour of receiving that report? Okay. Against? Thank you. The next is 6.9 on page 87, the North Hacking Eroding Update. And moving second uh, to receive a report for that update, please. Deputy Ms. Beckford, I'll second it. Unless I missed anybody else. Who missed? Just going to look on that one. Page 87. So there's a series of what's happened, what's been completed. Was someone going to talk to that one? Um, uh, I can. Well, we just deal. This comes up in the afternoon as well, I think. Well, it'd be good that we're in the public. They might listen to it one day. Just mm -hmm. and tell us what we're up to. Absolutely. Through the chair. Uh, I think the. Oh, oh actually, that's a we can hand to the chair. Ah, oh, the chair. Sorry, Councillor Ragnar. It's your, the floor is yours. You're on mute. And we'll carry on with Tanya in the meantime until he comes back. Uh, through the chair. So the report speaks to the most recent updates. I think we had a hui in Whangaru uh, a couple of weeks ago now. Um, there have been a number of contracts for Whangaru and uh, I think Motu Tea Slip has been awarded as well now. Um, there's really great feedback from uh, from the community about the works that have been done in the North Hokianga, I think um, our hui have been in Pangaru and uh, at the Kura in Pangaru, uh, but I think that there's the work out in North Hokianga as a whole has been um, noticeable and, and again received some really good feedback about feeling like things are finally being done and we're finally being heard. Um, I wasn't able to attend the karakia on Tuesday, um, but heard that that was a great start, start to the works intended to. So, yeah, those two big slips that have been going, you know, been there for a little while now. So that's great. Yes. It'd be great to see those. Bits. Um, and I just want to share, we have a great committee out there. Um, I think you know, Harley did some some filming um, during the hui and after the hui, and um, I think my favourite bit, actually, I'm just going to share, was that he said, what's the best thing about working groups and the relationships? And I replied that our whanau are honest. I'm really honest. So um, those, those hui and those relationships are definitely beneficial for us and the community. Thank you. Councillor Helcard, how do we go? Hilda. <laughs> Kia ora. Um, yeah, great report for North Hokianga. And um, I just want, and I'm happy for the mahi that's been done. And, um, you know, gosh, they've put up with this for years. But also to draw attention that uh unfortunately our rep wasn't there for the day but uh, i'd like to see that fung appears included in the priority works uh namely the the slip where one whole um if you can call it a, a, a one and a half lane width where one whole lane is missing and i think tanya's been over that road uh, to a tangi and the other part of fung appear that um, it, um is the end of the road down at taika where um there's uh, when the tide just comes over on comes across the road, 
at high tide. But I just want to make sure that those are included, please. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody, any other questions? Any other comment from our mover and seconder? Make a comment because I also attended the Hui on Tuesday. And I said to the, I spoke to a uh, guy the following day and I said that I was concerned that in multiple trips that I had out to the West, West Coast Road since the August 2022 weather event, it didn't appear to me that anything had been done on the road whatsoever. So I've seen a very long spreadsheet that I don't understand, but I'm going to have that conversation up through the working group, which is, I think is appropriate place. But I saw a lot of things that look like that. A lot of things that look like that on the road, growing grass. And the question I had in my mind is, why didn't we do something to stop the water ingress, to stop these things getting worse? So that's also a question that I will have through the working group. Um, because I think sometimes we're not responsive enough. And I know it's a big network, and I know there's funding challenges, and I know we have to go through this NZTA circus every time. But that at least has got orange markers there to stop a driver driving into it. I didn't strike that when I drove out on Tuesday. And I hit a few of those in my car. So I was not too pleased about it. Hence why I um I sent that email because if I've been living out there for the last two two years and had to keep dodging those, I understand why that community I think it's pretty brassed. So it's just wanted to say that while we're in the public forum that Rob knows he got my email. Yeah, there's a new broom in town, so we'll see if we can progress all of those issues. The uh, no other questions. All those in favour of receiving that report? Right. Then I think we need to move into public exclusion. What time is that supposed to kick off? Waiting for some people to turn up. You want to move, move and second that we move into public exclusion. The reason for being there's a whole lot of confidential stuff that we need to discuss. Second, I think I'll move. Yep. Need to sort out the recording. Those in favour? Right. Right. We need to confirmation of the previous minutes, please. A move and seconder. Need staff time to put this on. Oh, staff. All the staff are leaving. Not a move and seconder.